Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the organizers to uh, allow me the, this opportunity to talk a little bit on the uh, Atlas of Living Flanders. Um, for those uh, who don't know the Atlas of Living Flanders, um, it is not an extended version of the Atlas or a super version. It's something about Flanders. And for those who don't know Flanders, it's a very small region just at the opposite side of the world. Um, and it's a part of Belgium. And I'd like to want to special thank all the, the people from Belgium who traveled all the world here to hear me give a little talk on the Atlas of Living Flanders. We, I'll give you some old history. In, in 2009, 2015, we had in the IMBO, the Research Institute for Nature and Forest, some strategic aims. And the, one of those was IMBO is a data management hub. It looks into appropriate data, gathering methods by means by which to disseminate data and make them readily available. I didn't invent that sentence, but it was there. And in 2010, then we already started to think on a biodiversity portal in Flanders. And I found this back from very old uh, vintage uh, uh, styling. But if you can read the highlighted text, we talk already from oh, about the uh, about GBIF, the Global Biodiversity Information uh, Facility. <clears throat> So we started, or we became a data publisher, but about the portal, uh, we didn't do very much in the Institute. Also, maybe I have to tell that I'm also part of the Belgian biodiversity platform, which is the Belgian GBIF node. So I'm based in that research institute for nature and forest. Um, and now some recent history. We had a question from the government, from the cabinet, clarify the current situation in Flanders around the availability of an integrated and public portal for biodiversity data and some questions that came along. Is there a need for a portal in Flanders, that small region in Belgium? Uh, what, of course, what would it cost? Uh, what who would be the main data users? Uh, what role can stakeholders play? And another set of questions, what does the development of such a portal imply? What conditions should the portal meet? And are there maybe some alternative and shortcuts? Some of the people, the managers came up with this uh, possible scenario. And you see in the center, there is something with GBIF on the right-hand side for you. Uh, a, a couple of institutes or uh, citizen science uh, organizations in Belgium. And then we were thinking about, let's make a portal that would be good for citizens, also for government policy, and, and maybe for the private sector. Um, we looked a little bit at the data types, but uh, what data types we would need. We would need data for long-term monitoring, um, about big game species, invasive species, about uh, fl floristic uh, cartering, uh, going into grid and getting all the plants. Also some new uh, data about telemetry or camera trap data, collection data, observation, uh, casual observations, also uh, his data, etc. So that was already giving us a little bit the idea where could we go to in the institutes. Um, in sep I think I skipped one, or maybe not. Yeah, um, these questions gave um, um, the start to an, an, uh, a project from OES, Environment Information Corporation. It's, inf it's a corporation within the Flemish government. And uh, the, the project was divided in two parts. Uh, there was a needs and feasibility study. So where we surveyed, it means asking, doing a lot of interviews with uh, or uh, organizations from the Department of Environment, INB, which is the Agency for Nature and Forest. They do like uh, the management of the protected areas. Um, they have the ranges, etc. Uh, the VLM is the Flemish Land uh, Agency. Uh, the VMM is the, uh, um, the, the Environment Agency and the depart in the Department of Environment. So we did a lot of interviews together with an agency of a, of a studio agency that's called Ipsos. And on the other hand, we would try to set up an Atlas of Living Australia in Imbo, my research institute, which is part of the Flemish government. So it's like in an RW. Uh, WS uh, system with all special safety features, etc., to see if we could get it installed, and that would be the goal of our uh, of what we would do. So these uh, questions: what, what are the main data needs from a policy, policy perspective? To what extent can the currently available data on GBIF meet these uh, these needs? And can this GBIF data be used to develop develop specific products? That is the um, the survey uh, part of the product uh, of the of the of the project. Um, and we had some conclusions, so I will not go into detail, but there's a lot of uh, 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 data which is uh, 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 snipped in, in, in Flanders, so there's a lower chance of missing important data. And you see that every instance of this Flemish government has its own needs. In a, in a big, if you look all over it, it will be 
a little bit more or less of the same, but they all had their specific needs. Some want aggregated data, some want high resolution data, some want uh, very uh, time uh, dependent data, etc. So the Agency of Nature and Forest, they wanted a, a reference species list, highest resolution possible, historical data, um, the Environment Agency, aquatic biodiversity data, and so on and so on. You know all these all these types of Two minutes, but I started late. <laughs> okay, we gave the structure and functionality. So um, we call it here Atlas of Living Fellows, but they didn't know. And see if this could meet the Atlas of Living Australia, the Atlas of Living uh, Flanders with the part search and download, uh, how to contribute data and how to do the analysis in the tool. And this thing agreed and is coming good along with the idea behind the Atlas of Living Australia. Also about the data access, it was about a user login and public access. That was something important that they wanted to keep some data uh, private. The conclusions of the need and feasibility study are going to be a little bit faster. They were very enthusiastic. There are some high expectations, uh, about, uh, especially about openness and friendliness, um, collaboration with as much data publisher in Flanders that would be possible. Um, and we had to um, also collaborate with Wagnemingen.be, which is an NGO in Flanders. They hold all the citizen science data and they are not really like uh, easy to work with when it comes to the publication of data. So that's a very important hurdle or a challenge that we still need to um, address. Okay. Um, we need we have a need of data with high spatial and temporal resolution, focusing in many cases on policy relevant species, so field and environment related species. So, in, if there is an environment like if there is a, a lapwing there, that they should really um, know very fast when it's there, so they can contact the farmers and make some measurements, etc. Then we had the technical proof of concept. Um, we installed the Atlas of Living Flanders, of Living Australia in Flanders. Uh, um, the installation was not easy. Uh, we tried it in our own uh, environment. Um, we did an evaluation of used technologies, estimate maintainability, required technical profiles, estimate of infrastructure cost, etc. Um, an evaluation of a model about availability and adaptability. So we created this, um, some iconic species in Flanders. We got the wolf, uh, velvet spider and mussels, and that's about it, I think. Um, but we could handle this. Uh, the conclusion of the proof of concept was that the installation is very complex. We gave the installation to a developer with not really a, a connection to the biodiversity informatics world. So there was a lot of, of discussion. Uh, there's a wide diversity of components and technologies used. Um, it's very fragmented and sparse documentation, but a very supportive community. And that's important to note. There is still a lot of work to do uh, for uh, correct uh, scripting, etc. Got one more minute. Okay, um, what we will do in the future, improve our infrastructure for uh, highly use of that. We need more servers. Uh, we require a significant commitment to uh, configure the modules, um, uh, ongoing maintenance, you know, all these uh, things more or less I get. And we also need a different differentiated access via a, link, a login. That is something that is uh, important to have. Um, the software provides desired functionality for raw data. Um, the technical setup of the software is possible, but we need commitment for that. The software also doesn't really give off the shell, uh, all the off the shelf products that we need, but we want to jump in the community and we want our developer to be part of the Living Atlas community, which we are not so far. So maybe that is something for the future. Um, we need as many data as we can and also that data from that NGO. These are some discussions going on with the ministry with the institutes and also with that NGO, and these, those are uh, not really easy. Um, and we need further analyze the improvement of processes surrounding biodiversity the information, of course. This is the way forward. Um, so uh, it can be for us a unique and comprehensive portal with validated biodiversity data from and for Flanders accessible to stakeholders, but also for local authorities, businesses, citizens, etc. We can, with the Institute, provide reliable and professional uh, uh, management. Uh, we need to do a lot of effort to, to say that we have in Flanders about 40 million um, occurrences available. Um, and that's good if you look at the um, this number of square meters we have in Flanders. If you look to Australia, I think there's 170 million, but Flanders is 570 times smaller than Australia. Uh, but I think we are up to that. We have a, a good, uh, a good feeling. It depends a little bit on on the on the cabinet. What would we need? A project leader, an application manager. We want this developer to be part of the community. Extra data publishing effort and a system, a system administrator. Voila.
I think I want to thank all the environmental agencies, Flanders, the Belgian Biodiversity Platform, and you. Thank you. Any questions for Dimitri? We have time, so right. it's okay. Do we have anything online, Richard? Nothing? Okay. Well, it was clear. Thank you, Dimitri. <laughs> Um, so if there is no question, we are going to um, continue with, with um, Alice 